Justice Delayed is a true crime podcast. Listener discretion is advised. Missoulian.com Tuesday, September 24th, 2002 Quote, Jennifer Lynn Olson Servo Abilene, Texas Jennifer Lynn Servo was murdered by strangulation and head trauma on September 16th, 2002 in her apartment in Abilene one week before her 23rd birthday. Funeral services with full military honors will be 2.30 p.m. Thursday, September 26th at Northridge Lutheran Church in Kalispell. Cremation has taken place and her remains will be scattered over Flathead Lake at a later date. Jennifer was born September 23, 1979 to Sherry Servo Olson and Norman Olson in Whitefish. She was raised in Columbia Falls where she was involved in the Columbia Falls swim team, volleyball, was manager for the boys' basketball team, and was cheerleader throughout high school. Jennifer was named by the United States Achievement Academy as a national award winner in history and government, being nominated by her teacher, Dan Fairbank. The criteria for selection were a student's academic performance, interest and aptitude, leadership qualities, responsibility, enthusiasm, motivation to learn and improve, citizenship, attitude and cooperative spirit, dependability, and recommendation from a teacher. Her family and friends were extremely proud of this award. Unquote. Eighteen years have passed since Jennifer Servo's murder. A lot can happen in 18 years. People grow up. They have kids of their own. Their perspectives change. They end relationships and friendships. And they start new relationships and new friendships. Sometimes people just drift apart. Sometimes people who were scared are no longer around the people they were scared of. And sometimes... People just don't understand how important the information they have really is. I still can't promise you that we're going to solve Jennifer's case, but I can promise you that we're starting to get under some people's skin. And together, we still have a better chance of solving this than any one of us working alone. Jennifer needs justice, and so do you, Kalispell. So come along with me on my search for justice in the form of of a murderer. Hi everyone, welcome back to Justice Delayed, the unsolved homicide of Jennifer Servo. I'm Sharon. So, unfortunately, I don't have the in-depth explanation of Jennifer's injuries to share with you this week. I want to make sure that it's thorough and correct before I present it to you. So that'll still be coming in a future episode. Instead, I'm going to share with you Jennifer's obituary. I read the first part of it to you already. It was printed on the Missoulian website, and it's dated September 24th, 2002. The details of that website are in the show notes. Jennifer's obituary goes on to say, and I'm quoting all of this. Quote, Jennifer also worked at the Columbia Falls water slides all through high school, as well as at Gary and Leo's grocery store. She worked at Marina K in Big Fork during college summer vacation, falling in love with the beautiful lake town. In 1996, when she turned 17, Jennifer decided to join the Army Reserves, much against her mother's wishes. She said it would help pay for her college, be an adventure, and she would be able to travel to places she would not have seen otherwise. Knowing once Jen made up her mind there was no changing it, Sherry unwillingly signed the enlistment papers, later realizing this would mold Jennifer into a very confident, mature young woman. In the summer of 1997, she went to basic training. Jennifer went to her monthly training sessions in Missoula and was a specialist in the 347th Quartermaster for almost six years. 
She was trained in water purification and later accepted the duties of retention officer for her unit. During IT training, Jennifer was made the squad leader in her barracks. Jennifer was very proud of the way she could handle the machine guns and learned how to throw grenades. All the things the Army taught her helped make her into a very confident, mature young lady, knowing she could do anything she set her mind to. The words, quote, I can't, unquote, were not in her vocabulary. Jen graduated from Columbia Falls High School in 1998. She left on graduation night to go to her Army IT training, not able to attend her graduation party. Her mother tried to get her to put the date back on the training so she could share the memories of the party with her friends, but Jen said it would not fit into her schedule for college. She wanted to move forward to the next step that would take her to her goal of reporting. During her freshman year of college, her Army Reserve unit was sent to El Salvador to purify water for the people after a hurricane destroyed half of the country. She was so excited about going to do what she was trained to do and to help those poor people. Jennifer attended the University of Montana from 1998 to 2002, being accepted into the journalism school her junior year. She got her first television job her freshman year at KPAX in Missoula. Jen accepted the job at KPAX TV despite the early hours and a full load at school. She was willing to do anything to get her, quote, foot in the door, unquote, and before long did a few stories for the evening news. In her junior year, Jennifer went to work for KECI-TV, where she would gain experience in reporting. She completed her internship for the station in the summer of 2001. While at KECI-TV, Jen balanced a full university workload in addition to reporting news on the weekend newscasts. Weekend newscasts reach most of western Montana. Jen tackled the news business with integrity and ambition. Her parents and grandparents were so proud to see her reporting on the news. Jen also worked as news anchor for KUFM Public Radio during her senior year, where she was heard every day on the 5 o'clock news. Only the best journalism students get this opportunity. Jennifer was involved in the station winning the regional Edward R. Morrow Award. Jennifer graduated from UM in May 2002. She was offered her first full-time news reporter job from KRBC-TV in Abilene. She was so excited to be on her way to her new career knowing this was a stepping stone to the bigger markets. Her mother helped her move to Texas, an adventure for both as they are Montana girls not experienced in driving in the big cities. They made it, getting lost only once, and were proud of themselves for this accomplishment. It was a special week together and will be cherished by her mother forever. Getting Jennifer settled in her new apartment was fun. She said, quote, Life is good. I have my own apartment with a swimming pool, a new job reporting, my cat, and cable TV, unquote. Jennifer gained many friends in the short time she worked at KRBC-TV. Her goal was to follow the footsteps of Katie Couric and become a national TV news anchorwoman. With Jennifer's determination and toughness of spirit, there was no doubt from anyone who knew her she would reach her goals. She stated after she was successful, she wanted to come back to Montana, loving the Flathead Lake area. Her dream was to live on Flathead Lake in a big house with all her family around. Her ashes will be spread on Flathead Lake at a later date. Jen loved to go sailing when there wasn't much wind, enjoying the sunbathing and swimming at Flathead Lake. The North Flathead Yacht Club was one of her favorite places to go, saying it was like going on vacation, escaping the worries of work and school. She loved to shop anywhere, anytime, even on a college student's wages. Jen loved skiing, hiking in Glacier Park, going to lakes with her friends and family, camping with her grandparents, sister, and cousins when she was little, and teasing her stepdad and brothers whom she loved so much. She loved her cat, Mr. Binks, that her boyfriend, redacted, gave to her. Jen's favorite thing to do when she came home from college was to go to Moose's for pizza. Jen was so sad that she couldn't be with her sister Krista when her baby girl was born on July 21st. Jen wanted to be Redacted's favorite aunt, unquote. Jennifer's obituary then goes on to list the people she is survived by. That paragraph ends with, quote, she was fortunate to have many good friends, unquote. It continues, quote, she was preceded in death by her grandfather, Dewey Olson, and great-grandparents. Jennifer will be greatly missed by her family and friends, 
she touched more lives than anyone will ever know. Memorials may be made to the UM School of Journalism, Northridge Lutheran Church, or a charity of the donor's choice. Arrangements are under the direction of Johnson Mortuary and Crematory in Kalispell. Unquote. I wanted to share the obituary with you today because there's so much information in it about Jennifer and who she was as a person. It's heartbreaking. And I want you to try to get to know Jennifer the way that I do. Obviously, I never knew her. I only know what I have learned about her over the last three and a half years. But I do know that she is sincerely missed to this day and that the world would be a better place with her in it. To catch you up a little bit on my investigation, I told you a few weeks ago that I was going to email Sergeant Will Ford of the Abilene Police Department regarding Jennifer's case. So I got his email address from the official Abilene Police Department website, and I wrote him an email with several carefully considered questions, pressed send, and within moments, I received a message back that the email address was invalid. So right now, you might be remembering an article I told you about a couple of weeks ago. It was on BigCountryHomepage.com, and it was written by Danica Hill. A PD officer turns hobby into business. In that article, Sergeant Ford said he was planning to retire in 2020. So naturally, my first thought was that Sergeant Ford had retired from the police department in 2020, just like he said he was going to. But that's not exactly the case next time on Justice Delayed. In the meantime, brainstorm with me. Help guide this investigation by sharing your thoughts and ideas. And listen along as I conduct this sometimes brave, definitely challenging, but mostly heartbreaking investigation into Jennifer's murder. Keep getting the word out about Jennifer's case. I can't tell you how important this part is. We're still trying to reach the people with information about this case. So post about Jennifer's case on social media. Share the podcast promos and the new episodes with your friends as they're released. Invite your friends and family to join our podcast discussion group on Facebook. Post on Instagram or Twitter and use the hashtag Jennifer Servo, hashtag who killed Jennifer Servo, or hashtag Solve Jennifer Servo's murder. Follow us on Twitter at Justice Delayed P and on Instagram at Justice Delayed Pod. There's some exclusive content on my social media that you won't see anywhere else, including new photos to accompany each episode, starting with last week, episode 9. Every time you mention Jennifer's case, it increases our chances of actually reaching the people we need to reach. Whoever they are. Wherever they are. A lot can change in 18 years. If you know anything about Jennifer's case, or if you just think you might, contact me. It can be anonymous if it needs to be. If you know someone who was part of this case, contact them. Let them know about the podcast and encourage them to contact me and tell their story. Unless, of course, you think you know who the murderer is, and then just call the police. Don't take any chances. If you have a tip about the case, contact the Abilene Police Department at 325-673-8331 or call Crime Stoppers at 325-676-TIPS. You can also find those phone numbers on our website at justicedelayedpod.com. Be sure to subscribe so you'll get our new episodes as soon as they drop. The next episode drops Monday, January 25th, 2021. Once again... To the Montana boyfriend and the Abilene colleague, you both know a lot more than you're telling. Send me a clue. Send me that piece of the puzzle that will point me in the right direction. You know what it will take to solve this case. And I know you kept copies of everything you gave the police. So send me your cell phone records from June, July, August, and September of 2002. 
Tell me about the police interrogations back then. And tell me once and for all what was missing from Jennifer's apartment when the police took you there. I know at least one of you is innocent. Help me help you. And help me give Jennifer's family the peace that they've been waiting for for over 18 years. It's time, and you know it. You know how to reach me. There's really no way for this to end without a conviction. So join me again next week as I actively search for justice in the form of a murderer. Remember to participate in the brainstorming, send me suggestions for leads to pursue, and ask questions, all on our Facebook discussion group. Or just follow along as I try not to get into too much trouble. Join me on Monday for more about the unsolved homicide of Jennifer Servo. Justice Delayed was written and produced by me. All opinions offered are my own. I want to say thank you to Jennifer's family. Without their support, this podcast wouldn't exist. All music for this episode is provided by Lee Rosevere. You can find his music at happypuppyrecords.ca. Our logo was created by Caitlin Spencer. My sources for this episode are detailed in the show notes. Our success depends on your participation, so remember to send in any leads you think I should pursue or any questions you have about the case. This is Sharon, and I'll be back.